Today's project is the crisscross binding, the binding formerly known as the secret Belgian binding. The construction of this binding is very unusual. The cover is made of three boards which are sewn together with a thread that crisscrosses across the spine. The sections are then sewn to the thread that crosses the spine to form the book. It also has an interesting history and some interesting variations, which I'll talk about once I run out of things to say while I'm demonstrating the sewing. So let's get stuck into the book. We'll start by folding paper and cutting the covering boards, then covering the boards, connecting the boards together, and then finally sewing the sections into the cover. The paper I'm using is 118 GSM Mohawk Superfine. You'll have seen me do this trick before of fanning out the pile of paper to make counting out the sheets for the sections easier. I repeat the trick on each section. That way when the paper's folded over, it meets at a point and the outer sections are symmetric around the fold. And this means I don't have to trim the book. It looks quite neat at the fore edge. For this book I'm folding six four sheet sections. With this weight of paper and four sheet sections, the most I would do for this type of binding is eight sections. The inventor of this binding recommends 12 millimeters as the maximum thickness of the block. Since this book doesn't have a glued spine, it doesn't rely on drape or the paper folding to open. So the type and properties of the paper aren't very important in this book. Even the grain direction is less important, though I'd never go as far as to say not to have the grain direction going head to tail. Here you can see the neat foredge with the sawtooth pattern, which really doesn't need to be trimmed up. The next step is to cut the boards to size, and the size is determined by the size of the paper plus the square. The square is the overhang of the boards past the paper. I'm going to use 2mm at the head and tail, and 3mm for the fore edge. So the width of the boards is the width of the paper plus 3mm, and the height of the boards is the height of the paper plus 2 times 2. Now you can adjust those to what you prefer, but for a small book like this, you wouldn't want to go too much larger. You don't need a bench hook to cut the boards to size, you just need something to push your ruler and square up against. I'll start by straightening up one edge on each of the boards, and then cutting one end square, and then I will cut the boards to the correct height, and they're all to the same height. There are some good videos on YouTube on how to do this binding, so I didn't feel a pressing need to do one myself, though at some point I always wanted to do one just to give my take on it, but I wanted to understand the history of the binding. My initial understanding of the binding was that Hetty Kyle had seen this binding in Ascona while teaching there and had brought that to the US and popularized it under the name the secret Belgian binding because of some connection to Belgium and because the secret I think was supposed to be the attachment of the sections to uh, the covers. At some point a Belgian book artist Anne Goy became aware of this binding on the internet and realized that it was her binding and she set the record straight with a book called The Crisscross Binding, and she obviously decided to rename the binding something she felt was more appropriate. The width of the spine piece, I make the width of the text block plus the thickness of the boards, but I don't squish the text block really flat to measure it, because there's going to be some swell because of the sewing. So I just sort of close it up. So in this case it was 9 millimeters, and then I rounded it up to 4 millimeters for the thickness of the boards. So the next step is to cover the boards. 
Now if you use a really nice board you wouldn't have to cover them and I think C Lemon does that in one of her videos. The gray, gray board isn't really an appropriate board not to cover. The corners always get bumped and delaminate. I'm using black paper just because I wanted a very high contrast to make it easy to see what I was doing. Though it's not the easiest material to work with. Uh, any bit of glue on it shows up. So maybe I should have chosen something else. I'm cutting the turn ends to 15 millimeters for everything except for the spine piece. Though I started to trim it and then realized that it needed to be less than that. I did a 10 millimeter turn in just to give a slight overlap uh, at the center. 15 millimeters would have been wider than the center piece. Now I'll trim off the corners three millimeters away from the corner and then turn in the head and tail and then the fore edge and spine edge. Now some people measure this or use guides. Uh, I think it's a good skill to be able to eye that. Uh, it's much faster. Going back to the cover material, the main feature of this binding is the sewing of the boards together or the connecting of the boards together. So you really want to um, bring that feature out. So you do want a strong contrast between the sewing and the coverboard material. And you don't want a pattern that's also going to hide the sewing. So a lot of decorative papers would probably not be appropriate for the cover material. And really uh, a plain subtle pattern is probably best and a contrasting color. So you have a light cover board and dark thread or um, in this case the dark cover and light thread. In Anne Goy's book she sets the record straight about how she developed this binding and how it fits in with her artistic vision and she also documents how she feels is the best way to bind the book. Now I waited a while before buying this rather expensive book from uh, Europe and I'll put a link in the description of where you can buy a copy yourself. When it arrived I was surprised to learn that she was recommending a different method of attachment of the signatures than I'd learned. Okay so the next step is to punch the holes for the sewing uh, to connect the boards together. So I decided to go in 15 millimeters. That I think that looks quite good. The next decision is the spacing of the holes. You want enough holes that the there's plenty of sewing because that is the feature of the book. Uh, and you also want the head and tail sewing fairly close to the end so you don't have those that floppy bit of board. I'm using 23 millimeters to space the holes and I'm using a pair of uh, spring dividers to mark these. If you don't have spring dividers you can just use a ruler and all. There's a number of tools that you can use to punch the holes. I'm going to use a Japanese screw punch. You can use one of those rotary leather hole punches. Uh, you can use an awl. Uh, Anne in her book describes using an awl and pushes the holes through and then uses a scalpel to trim off a bit of the material that gets pushed through. I'm going to push the screw punch uh, through from the outside as well as the inside just to neaten up the holes from the outside. To do the connecting of the boards you really need to hold the boards in position with a slight gap between them especially when you're starting out. Now you can use a bulldog clip or a piece of painter's tape works really well. It's my preferred method. Though you do want to check that the painter's tape isn't going to mark your cover material first. So try it on a scrap piece of paper and leave a small one or two millimeter gap between the boards. I'm using a fairly heavy linen thread and it's it's just off-white. It's quite a nice color that matches the uh, black paper and I'm using a darning, a large darning needle. 
So it's just a matter of weaving back and forth between the boards through the holes. After you've gone back and forth twice, then tie a knot, just a reef knot will be fine. Though try and put the knot so that it'll sit inside the hole. The trickiest part is maintaining a good tension in the thread and keeping the threads in straight lines. Once you've tied the knot, go back to the outside and do the third cross across the spine of the book and then back to the inside of the book and then down to the next station. Now it's just a matter of repeating this process until you reach the tail of the book. If you do need to join some extra thread, just do it at the on the inside near one of the holes and again try and put the knot inside the hole. I think connecting the boards is the most important step in this binding. It's the thing that gives it its character. And so you really want to take the time to get the tension right and keeping the threads nice and straight. Now in Anne's book, she adds a step after the sewing where she glues the thread to the inside and then presses the boards really hard to press the thread into the boards. Now I don't do that because I didn't want a step that required a press and I don't mind particularly being able to see the thread on the inside of the boards. Plus you end up uh, pressing the threads in on the outside of the boards which isn't necessarily uh, desirable to me. And in terms of gluing the thread to the inside of the boards. I think that happens anyway when we cover the inside of the uh, front and back board. And finish with an overhand knot, again trying to put the knot inside the hole. The next step I'm going to show is punching the holes in the sections. You may like to cover the inside of the boards first. It's neither here nor there. Now I'm not going to sew on every crisscross. I'm only going to sew on every second one. So I'm definitely going to sew on the one at the head and tail and then every other one. I'm going to use a punching jig as always. I'm going to position the paper so that it's got the square two millimeters head and tail. Hook the punching jig over the paper and then mark the center of each of the uh, sewing that goes across the boards. Now I do lose track of the head and tail at some point but Luckily there's a, just enough asymmetry that I work it out again before I do the sewing. You could mark them, but because there's no lining on the spine, there is a chance that you'd be able to see the marks. 
so I'm just use, doing the usual thing of using an awl to punch through at 45 degrees using this little jig. Now I'm going to cover the inside of the boards. I'm using a dark, fairly thick paper which will hide the black turn-ins. Otherwise I might want to line the boards between the turn-ins just to hide that. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we will be able to see the sewing impression through this uh, cover paper. I don't mind that, but if you don't like that, then the best way to uh, deal with that is to press the boards in a steel press which will uh, press the thread into the cover boards. Now I've used PVA as the only adhesive just because I didn't I wanted to keep this project simple so but this is a step where mix would be a very good adhesive just if you're a bit nervous about laying down pieces of paper and getting them crooked then mix gives you an opportunity to lift it and straighten it up. Something I forgot to do on the other side was to just glue that thread down and line it up with all the other threads. I think it might have been aligned already anyway, so I got lucky. You will have noticed that the boards have a slight outward warp on them because the cover paper pulled them out. Now once this lining paper dries, that will counter the outward pull and the boards are quite flat. So understanding the properties of your materials is really important. The final step is sewing the sections to the cover. Start on the inside, go to the outside, loop around one of the crossovers and then go back to the inside of the section. Tie a knot on the inside and then go down to the next hole. Repeat this process until you reach the tail of the book. This method of attachment is significantly different to what Anne Goy does in her book. However, on the internet, this is by far the most common variation. And thus, I've called this the popular variation. And my personal opinion is that I think this is the best method of attachment, especially for people with limited binding experience. In the future I might do another video showing uh, Anne Goy's approach. Once you reach the end, again loop under the crossover thread and then go straight up into the next section and then go down to the next hole. Now it becomes a little bit trickier because you have to sew these up the side of the spine piece and it's easier using a curved needle. So I've swapped over to a curved needle and it's also easier I think if you fold the front cover back. Now you have to loop under the crossover thread and then somehow get back into the section which means you'll end up loosening the thread so you try and keep the tension further back correct and then just get the tension correct once you reach the end of the section. This is probably the trickiest part of the binding. Once you reach the end, instead of doing a proper kettle stitch, just go up into the next section without the thread crossing over itself. This allows you to move thread from section to section after you've finished the sewing if you find that the sewing tension isn't even. I don't think I've actually highlighted this little gimmick where the boards will fold back onto themselves. I think the only time that's really useful is when you're sewing the sections to the cover. I'm really enjoying the feedback and questions I'm receiving from my Patreons. 
If you're able to and are interested in supporting me through Patreon, the link is in the description below. Since we've already lined the inside of the boards, there's no paste down, so once we've finished this sewing, the book is complete. The sewing is hard to describe, so I will uh, show some more footage of that. But once you reach the final section and you reach the end, just do a, a knot on the inside, just like at the start, and that is the book complete. That's the popular variation of the crisscross binding complete. I hope you've enjoyed the video and as always I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're interested in supporting me in, with Patreon please go to the link below. If you want to be notified of my future videos please hit the subscribe button and until next time cheerio.